in chemistry, your tables will look different than they do in physics. Quite often because you have a, a before measurement, an after measurement, and then a change measurement. You can be making uh, five tables that look something like this. I'm going to walk you through how to make one in Excel. Also, I'm not going to do with the simulation that you're going to use. So you can't just copy mine. I'm going to model it for you using a different simulation. Let's look here. Here are some gas particles floating inside. The pressure before is 21 point, ooh, it's changing. We have some uncertainty here, something atmospheres, that's type of air pressure. Let's organize our table similar to how it is in our Word document. Come on, wordy word. Good. I'm going to put this lower down. I'm going to put Excel above it. I'm going to make my table look something like this. I'm going to have a blank cell, and then I'm going to have, uh, in this case, it's going to be pressure. It's air pressure. Pressure of what actually is the gas? Uh, I think this is neon gas. It doesn't say, but I'm going to say neon gas. The units are ATM, which are atmospheres. Okay. And we're going to have a pressure before and a pressure afterwards. I'm going to squeeze in, and that's going to be after. Uh, pressure of neon gas before and a change in this case of um, pressure atmospheres. We're going to have trial one, we have trial two, we have trial three. The average looking here is in a weird place. It's down here because you want to find the average of the change. We don't care about the average before and after. We care about the actual mass of the water in this case. In this case, we care about the actual change in pressure. So the average is down here. It's not going to have everything only right there. So trial one, pressure of the neon gas before. Let's go check it out. Uh, let's go from 0.2 to 0.9. I'm going to say 21. I don't know, say 21.6. That's what I'm saying. And also note we have uncertainty right here. This is for a digital balance. Here we have this meter and simulations, we're going to treat them as digital scales. So since we have one decimal place, I'm going to have here one decimal place, plus or minus 0 0.5 AT. Let me make this a little bigger. Come here and drag this a little bigger. Now I'll press space bar a few times. Okay, uh, pressure of neon gas afterwards. Let's squeeze in some more neon gas. We're going to wait for it to disperse. We can see uh, pressure went up to let's say 26, 26.3. I'm going to say 26.3. And again, this also has an uncertainty of plus or minus on a Macintosh. You can go Option Shift Plus. On the Windows machine, I suggest it's doing plus and then underlining it. It's not quite as good. It's slowing down my computer to underline, God forbid. Really slowing down my computer to underline. My goodness. Okay, I'm going to delete that because I have a Mac. 0 0.5 ATM. Again, I'm going to press space for a bunch of guess over here because we want the table to look like this guy. 
Then we're going to have change in pressure, and we're going to subtract. Notice when we subtract, it wouldn't be logical. I know it goes after, then before, but we're going to have this logical subtraction. And Excel will subtract 4 squares equals this minus this. Why is that click? I'll type it then B3, and it's 4.7. Uh, for the uncertainty, we actually added here. If you get this wrong right now in grade 9, that will be okay. Oh, we're breaking some rules here. But for grade 9, this is okay. I forgot my plus or minus sign. Line this up as best I can. Good. I would also then do trial 2, trial 3 and only have an average down here. I would then copy and paste this into my lab report. This looks something like this. And this would be, oh, look at this. I don't have the lines. That's no good. It's not centered. That's no good. Let's go back here. I need to center these. Center that. That looks better. Might bold these headings too. I think that'd be nice. Let's pretend I have some numbers here. To make things quicker for you so you don't need to watch me. Let's say I did this. And, and let's say this was. Zero. Again, I would have, I can fail to the right. And I can see, oh, quite a range here. Then I want to find the average of that. So I'm going to go equals average, open bracket, select these three things, close brackets. And then some average is 4.6333333. I really don't want all those three, three, threes. So I need to control the decimal places. I look up here for this guy, and I click this until it matches the same number of decimals. Also, this 22.0, I want my point zero there. So we should all have one decimal place. I fix the centering. I need to fix the line business. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna turn on all these lines to make this even better. I'm going to merge. That's ah, a button here in Excel somewhere. Um, merge and center. Oh, yeah. Boop. So merge. Now I'm going to copy and paste. Let's try this one again. Delete this one. And if we compare it to the sample, I got after, before. We have the difference. The math makes sense. Bigger number my smaller number, just like back in grade three. I got this looking like that. <gasps> I don't have a table. Table one. Okay. Uh, change in pressure of neon when, and in this case, you don't know it. It doesn't really matter, but I'll tell you, my independent variable would have been the temperature. So this is at 300 Kelvin. Uh, at, oh, but you don't know Kelvin, let's change this to degrees for you, 27 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's table one. Remember, you have five manipulations, so you're going to do this five times. So underneath this, you would do this again and have your second manipulation. So I could just copy and paste. Uh, I guess I've tried. It's probably better to do it in Excel, actually. I can just copy and paste here. And I would change the temperature. Uh, let's say I was going to do that 50 degrees. There we go. 50 degrees. I would check the fresh, uh, here, uh, the reset. Set my initial squirts in there. Change this. To 50 degrees. Uh, well, I'm 
almost there, almost there. 50. So I have my initial pressure of 20. Ooh, maybe 20.1. And this also shows why maybe your the four readings aren't all the same, but it's a change in pressure that matters in this case. And that's what I'd be graphing. I hope this helped make the table. So after I would do this table, I'd copy this one after I did it properly. It's going quick for you. And I would actually get rid of that. And this would be table two. And this would be at 50 degrees. Afterwards, when I make my graph, this is my independent variable that I changed. And this would be my dependent variable that I measured. Any questions, please ask.